All right, YouTube, we're here with the FMS MOA, the 1500 millimeter glider. And uh, I've already got the XT60 on here, which uh, comes with a JST end, but I'm going to be using um, the E Flight end, E Flight batteries that I put XT60s on. And then I'm also going to be using um, a new battery that I just got with the Motion RC Order, which is an Admiral 1300. It's a 2S uh, 30C pack, and it looks maybe just a little bit longer than the E-Flight pack. 1300 milliamp 2S, 20C, 1300 milliamp 30C, and then I also got a 3S of this um, that's charging right now. We're gonna see what one seems to work best. And who knows, maybe we'll go with a smaller battery. Anyway, just uh, <clears throat> to give you the rundown on assembly on this, it's going to be a pretty easy plane to assemble. In the unboxing, I showed you how this goes together. Uh, there's basically a rod that goes in there between the two wings, and it's it's bent at probably like a 30-some-odd degrees angle. So what you have to do is you have to kind of slide that in and get that get that square. And then once it's square, you can try to slide the other piece in, and you just kind of have to, it's, it's a little bit tricky actually, because the gap, it's hard to control this rod once you already have it in. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to try putting it in the other way. We'll see. This seems to want to more or less push the other side out. That's the first thing I did, just because I kind of wanted to showcase the shape of the wing for the video. Um, and it is one of the early steps in the build. So there's just a very small gap in here, and so that's going to get held together just fine. So you can also twist the, the wing sections, and that will kind of help to establish the squareness. So we'll just set that aside. There's two bags that come with this, and then of course we got our receiver. Um, this bag just has a magnetic hatch and a couple of screws, and then in this bag there's a splitter, which we're not going to use, and the splitter is what you would use for the Aeron channel if you're using a 4-channel receiver. <clears throat> a couple of screws and control arms, a few screws, control arms, one of the wing adapters, I'm going to put that over here with this and then a handful more uh, screws, control arms, and some clevises for ailerons. And then of course the empty bag. So we'll just lay this stuff out of the way as we go. Um, so now that we've kind of evaluated that stuff, the first step on any plane, if you really want to be honest about it, is to try to get all the servos centered. Um, <clears throat> obviously in this case the servos that are inside are more or less centered but the servos in the wings are not necessarily centered and it's pretty evident because they put these things flat so they can ship nicely. So you want to keep that in mind as you're deciding how you want to handle it. The control horn installation is the first thing they want you to do. Uh, there's a control horn on the rudder and then on the ailerons and of course on the elevator. So um, I don't know if they're any different. We're going to open them up here and find out right now. And I'm going to work through that right now. Do we have anything that's colored? I'm going to grab a piece of paper here. Do we have any colored paper close by? <clears throat> yeah, let's try that. It's just hard to see these things, so it helps if you have a little piece of colored paper especially for these little rings like this. And these are what go on to the, it's like the rubber tube. That's what kind of keeps everything together. So it looks like it comes with a total of, I always love this when they do this. We, we have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six screws. And it looks like these things are designed to receive two each. So they actually gave us extras on this, which is pretty awesome. Usually you get about half of what you need. So this is going to point in toward the hinge side. 
and uh, then we can flip that upside down and then on the top of this thing you're not actually going to have to install any backer because the wing itself is going to have the backer installed. And get an appropriate sized Phillips screwdriver. Oops, I missed the, the right hole. The right hole, there's opposite holes. Okay, so that's not reaching through, so I gotta figure out maybe there's a different bag that has different sized screws in it. So I'm just gonna check in the other bag. This is the other bag, and it does have some longer screws in it, so that must be for the elevator. Which, incidentally, um, these are the same, but the screws are a little bit different there too. Looks like it comes with three screws. Um, that would be the screws that adapt this onto the fuse. And then it comes with longer screws um, that will reach through the surface of the elevator. So basically we can get that assembled by sticking that in with the holes facing toward the hinge side. And then just pay attention to where the, the screws go because there's only two screw holes. So we're going to go ahead and tighten this in. And uh, we will go ahead and pause it. The three screws are the same, so you get one extra on this one, it looks like. Uh, go ahead and pause it, and we'll come right back and we're done with this. Okay, so those things mounted really nicely, and the screws allow you to cinch down the plastic pretty good. Um, there's a little bit of heft to this foam. It's really pretty high quality and I've worked with a lot of different models so far so far really happy with this um, I hope it's not too overly heavy and it looks like the next step they're, they want us to put all the control arms on um, for all the surfaces so why don't we go ahead and just keep working through all of these ironically enough there was um, one control arm that was alone and then another control arm that was alone that had three screws with it that go with a the rudder. They didn't indicate that anywhere. There was no markings on the bag, but you'll figure it out real quick. And then this one is for the rudder. And so it's going to give you longer screws to reach through the body of the rudder as well. And since there's an extra screw with some of these, as you go, if you think about it, take the extra screws and put them with your bag of goodies that you're going to you know, put in storage or something, because it'll get confusing having the extra screws that might confuse your next bag that you open. So I'm going to drop those out, because like this comes with three screws that will reach through the wing surface. And of course on this one it's pretty obvious which side it goes to because it's got to go to that control. Not over here, that's where the elevator goes. And you always want these to point in toward the hinge. And look at this, this hinge is already glue reinforced. That is really cool, I did not expect that. So they've taken and run glue down the seam of the pinch joint on the styrofoam, which is, again, really unexpected. Now, I'm not going to actually attach this yet, just for the simple fact that it's not centered necessarily yet. And so I don't want to have to redo it three times. Okay, so we're just going to get this installed here real quick. And again, this came with three screws, so just line up where the screws are supposed to supposed to go through to hit because two of them are just keeper pins and then two of them are actually screw uh, holes. So once you get the, the screw started then you can jump over to the other side and, and get the opposite corner. We'll go ahead and pause it for this part so you don't have to watch me sit there and turn a screwdriver. Okay so guys you've probably experienced this if you work with any model airplanes in the past but I was just like a regular craftsman. Um, this is a P0 size screwdriver and it doesn't quite work as good as this free one that I got. I think it's a free wing plane actually which is ironic because FMS and free wing are kind of like big competition. And uh, this cheap screwdriver works really nice for these Chinese junky screws. So if you, if it's not always true, there's times when the Craftsman style works better or the name brand variety will work better. But as you get these things tight, you don't want to overdo it so much that you squish all the material out, which you could do. But just stop when you feel like you got a good bite on the control surface. And um, if you're in any, any doubt, just move the control surface to the full extreme using the control 
lever and just feel if it feels strong. It feels strong, so we're good there. So now we're going to go ahead and do the wings. <clears throat> the wings are a little bit different because the servos are still stuck in the pocket. That's okay. It doesn't really matter yet. It's not going to be an issue for us. <clears throat> so obviously these ones, um, these ones are going to drop through the aileron. Now on the mini MOA, or the these ones feel a little bit too fat, but they're the same on both sides, so the foam just must need to be worked through a little bit. Okay, so they go, but they're a little bit tight. And that's okay, because, I mean, that's kind of what you want, ultimately, at the end of the day. So that's a nice fit. And uh, same thing, they gave us two screws and then a spare on each one of these. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get these in real quick, and we will pause it while we're... Well, let's, let's get the first one started first. There is, there is a slight angle on these. And the angle is supposed to go into the pocket. You'll know when you do it because it fits better with the angle in. Um, and if you're in any doubt, just try it both ways until the one that feels better. And it'll be really obvious. And if you get it wrong, then your buddies will make fun of you when they see it. All right, we're going to pause it and come back to you when we're done putting these in. Okay, guys, um, that went really smooth. And I wanted to point out one detail I'd mentioned while I was doing this, but... I've never built a plane, and I built a bunch of them. Well, that's not true. I've built a few planes. But these things line up. You put the screws in, they go right through the pocket, right to the other side. And normally you're sitting there struggling, trying to get everything to align. These things just line up. It's weirdly simple to assemble, um, which doesn't seem like a big deal, and it really isn't a huge deal if they don't line up perfect. But um, it's a pain in the butt when they don't. It's just not such a big deal, like huge savings of life. But um, while I've got this upside down, I'm going to go ahead and peel this tape off. Uh, this fiber reinforced tape is what holds the uh, aileron wires, and it's super sticky. That's one thing I'm not crazy about. Now I've got sticky residue on my fingers. Um, <clears throat> there's some tape there that covers up the servo line, and it looks really nice. It's, it's a good match with the color of the wing. So... It's just devils in the details on airplanes, guys. You already know that if you've ever worked on airplanes. It's just, if they're nice, you'll know it because they're high quality. Okay, so they're saying uh, the next step would be to go ahead and attach the horizontal stabilizer. So we're going to do that now. We've already got our control arm on there. We did that earlier. And this just slides into the pocket. And there's a recess. And then you can kind of line up the screw holes real simply. And then you use these longer screws. It's very obvious. It's not partially obvious. Some planes, it should be very obvious. And then you're like, okay, I don't know what to do. This has been extremely obvious the whole time. So I sort of, you know, when I do build videos for planes like this that are extremely obvious to build, I, I don't know. If you need to build video, maybe you're new to the hobby. Or maybe you're just not good at building things. But, um... This is a really easy build. And so far, you can usually kind of gauge the quality of a manufacturer by how easily things go together. Horizon Hobby, almost always really good. Uh, Motion RC sells Horizon Hobby, and they also sell FMS, and um, they sell Dynam too. Dynam would be on their economy line. And I like Dynam, I've had a good, good experience with Dynam, other than landing gear. Um, but so far, this will be my first experience with FMS, and it's been, Pretty impressive for a, an inexpensive um, plane. I'm excited to see how it works. I wasn't excited about that right there. Uh, what happened is as you're tightening the screw, you end up engaging this. It's not decal, it's actually paint. And so what it did is the abrasion from tightening the screw actually rubbed off some of the paint. Uh, right where the screwdriver was going. And I was using the small screwdrivers I can get in there. Um, you also notice I have the pops in your hand, not in your mouth glue here. Um, this glue is a Hobby King product. It's called uh, Mucilage. It says L, which stands for large, because you can get this in a small container or large container. Uh, the part number is 17535. Mucilage, M-U-C-L. 
I L A G E dash L. This stuff works really good. It's super cheap, crappy Chinese glue. It's like rubber cement in a bottle that doesn't eat foam. Uh, works great. Highly recommend it. If you don't have any, it's very inexpensive. The next time you order something at Hobby King, order that. Um, there's a variety of other types that work okay, and I've got a lot more expensive types that don't work as good. That stuff tacks up like crazy, and it will hold stuff together that should not be held together. Okay, so horizontal stabilizers on. You'll notice I did not hook up any of the controls yet on any of these surfaces, including the ailerons. That's just because I know better. Okay. So the next step they're telling us to do is to go ahead and um, get the, well, and then this picture tells you you're supposed to go to the outside most control, whatever. I'm going to probably go from the outside most on the control arm of the servo to the inmost hole on the ailerons, because I like more aileron authority, especially on a glider, so you can roll that thing. Um, and in my case, I'm going to be using uh, flapper on configuration, which means that I'm going to need a little bit more throw so I can bring them down or bring them up for spoiler rounds. And that's the way I'm gonna handle that. The other thing I have to figure out now is I've got this receiver and I have a satellite, which in this application is not gonna be so great. Um, one thing about Lemon RX is they use less packaging or whatever to save the environment. It's horrible. I've actually had a couple with cases that are damaged. Um, it's usually not the end of the world, but between you and me, I want more packaging. I don't care about that stuff. I want it to come in one piece from China and not be broken. So anyway, all of you at home, I'm sure you can probably appreciate that concern. I don't mind the less packaging as long as it still gets the job done. So for now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the receiver as is. Um, the satellite has to be bound with it if I'm going to use it. And to be perfectly honest, I really would prefer to have a diversity antenna. But let's just be honest, this thing's not going to be getting three miles away from my receiver or transmitter. Um, so if it'll fit, I'll go ahead and just ram them in there. And probably what's going to happen is I'm going to have to just, you can see the size of this. By the time I stick that in there, I'm going to be able to get a servo plug on it and it's going to slide in. It's going to be a nice little fit, but that's it. You know, there's not that much more to it. And then the ESC is sitting right here and it's kind of slipping behind this battery tray here. So I'm not sure if I can even get that flat if I wanted to. It looks like, and this is a seven channel with stabilization. I might actually be able to get it sideways, but you can see the antenna would be coming out the side. Um, so I actually have a trick up my sleeve for that, and it does look like it's going to fall all the way down, which would be perfect because it's right near the center of gravity on this plane. And uh, I do have a trick for that. So maybe in this application, I'll show you that trick real quick. And the trick is going to consist of something real simple, but I may not film the whole aspect or this, this whole aspect. Um, if you flip this thing over, there's two screws and then there's two pressure fit um, pins that go through. So you can open this up and then you literally can just point the antenna a different direction. So I'm going to open this up real quick and see if we can get that done right now. Um, same screwdriver you've been using for the rest of the stuff. Might be a little bit big. Yeah, it's a little bit big. We're going to get a smaller screwdriver. Why don't we go ahead and pause that. Okay, so we got the super small screwdriver. Um, this screwdriver is a uh, uh, Phillips 0 40, or uh, excuse me, 0 through 4 by 40. It's super small. And uh, if you don't have that small of a Phillips screwdriver, you can just use an X Acto knife blade and you should be able to get the job done. And speaking of X Acto knife blades, once you get those two screws out of the bottom, you got to be careful because you will uh, potentially compromise this cabinet, which is just a little plastic thing. So I'm, I'm taking my finger now and just running it in the seam. These things are super slick for some reason. Um, probably just cheap Chinese plastic. If you take a flat blade like this, it does work really nice to be able to get in there. And you can just uh, slip it in there and try to open this up. See that? Now it's popped open. And the other side. Okay, so now that's open. It's not as hard as it looks. It's just on video, it's kind of tricky. Um, so now you can see what that looks like on the underside. So, of course, this is a side you're going to have access to. 
and you can see this has a soldered lead. The diversity antenna one actually has an antenna that comes off of here and an antenna that comes off of there with a swivel. And so you can actually get into them just a little bit easier. Um, and the other thing too is you can get the antenna out a little bit safer too because I don't like having to bend them like that, but it's not like the end of the world either. So you see what I'm doing? I'm just kind of bending that so it'll go forward. Okay, so I'm just trying to make the bend but keep that solder joint from getting damaged. It's one of the weaker spots in the Lemon RX lineup in my opinion. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take this cabinet and we're just going to see if we have any ribs that we're going to run into. And it looks like right now we've got a supportive rib that we're going to run into, which stinks. So I'll have to take and make a little bit sharper bend. But you can see what I've done. I've just made a little bit sharper bend. You don't want to go too crazy because you will uh, compromise that little cable. So it's a pretty simple thing to do. But once you've done that, what you can do is you can kind of more or less mark where that thing's going to pop out. And then uh, you can make a little relief for the wire to come out. And there's a number of different ways you can get away with that. Um, I'm going to probably take an X-Acto knife and just take and notch it out a little bit. Can you pause that for a sec? Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, so I just took my X-Acto knife and I just worked a little U-shape um, exit strategy there. You can kind of see how that works. It just allows the antenna to stick out. And uh, what we can do is we can go ahead and get these slipped back in just gently because you want this to all seat properly. Otherwise, this thing wiggles and jiggles around, which is super annoying. Okay, so there you go. So now this uh, is the only remaining issue. And you can just uh, take your X-Acto knife and score it. And then it should break off. But it is a little bit easier to do once you get the screws back in. So I'm going to encourage you to get the screws back in first. So you go ahead and pause it again. All right, guys. So you can see that I just took and ran the knife along the edge and cut that off. So now we should be able to fit that in in a couple of different spots. And then these are your, your gains. I always turn those all the way up. And then I use the master gain, which would be on auxiliary three of my radio transmitter. And that's going to give us the ability to turn it down. Now, of course, you may find that like the ailerons have a little bit too much play, and so it'll oscillate. But you'll just cut that back on this, and then still use the master gain for uh, the elevator and the rudder. So now you can see, with that being repositioned, we can actually slide that in there if we decided we wanted to do that. And ironically enough, it's got a nice tight squeeze, and. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to see how well that fits. <clears throat> I, ideally, you want the leads going this way. Now, what I could do is I could hog out a hole for the antenna to shoot into because I'm going to be shooting into the uh, solid, solid portion here. But let's see how things reach first. And uh, you, do, you, you don't want to put this at a, a steep angle since it's a, you know, if you go like that, you're going to have a hard time with your channel assignment. Um, but the truth is because you're, you're, pitch will work, but your yaw will be all mixed up between yaw and roll. So what you need to do is you need to get this stuck into a position where it's going to be uh, true to the relative position of the aircraft. So if that means like right here, that's fine. Um, <clears throat> and just for the demonstration purposes on the video, I might go ahead and, and leave it up high. But just keeping in mind that when this all goes back together, guys, this is going to tuck up in there. Okay, but it should be fine. So let's go ahead and uh, you might go ahead and pause it while I get that situated. Now, the alternative choice you could do is you can actually take and stick this into the cavity where all these wires are now. And, and that would be okay. And I know a lot of you might kind of do that. It's really not a big issue one way or another. It'd be a lot easier. The only reason I kind of lean toward doing it back here is for the simple fact that there's there's so much stuff going on up here. Plus, it's going to get pretty hot up here. And you can see there's this little recess where these wires for the ESC that go up to the motor are supposed to sit. Well, of course, they're not really sitting in there. And it might just be because it got shifted in shipping or whatever. But um, 
by the time you force this up underneath uh, up underneath the hold on my antennas want to shift back into the cabinet there by the time you pull this all through you may be able to make enough room to get this to seat under there but you can kind of see it's it's gonna be a tight squeeze so I might fiddle with it and then I'll show you what I come up with here in a minute okay. all right guys real quick update even though I could put the receiver here and it would actually work pretty nice, I'm probably going to end up putting it up here just because by the time I fight with it, there is actually enough room to get it in there. And once these wires are all pulled and plugged in, it should go pretty smooth. Um, might be a little bit of a stretch to reach those cables. I may have to throw extension cords in to reach the ailerons. But for now, that's what we're going to try to do. So I'm going to work on that now. If you can just uh, adjust it if it needs to be. Um, one thing about it is the electronic speed control sits about right here, which is covered up by some foam. There is an inlet here and an outlet there. Um, so you can see where my finger's stuck in there, my finger's stuck in there. So it's a pretty good amount of airflow, but by the time you pack this thing up with a bunch of electronics, the main rationale behind not putting this in here, which would be really nice, uh, is I can't get to the trim pots to adjust the stabilizer. Now, if this is just a conventional, um, four channel, five channel, six channel, whatever channel receiver, then I would put it back there because it'd be way easy. Um, so at any rate, we've got bind, throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder, gear, and auxiliary one. Bind channel operates as auxiliary two. Auxiliary one is auxiliary one. Gear is your remote on off. And um, auxiliary three, which is not pinned, is your master gain. So in case you're wondering how that breaks down on a Lemon RX receiver, if you've never used one, they're very good. I like them a lot. Use them all the time. Um, the other thing is these, all these channels are labeled aileron, elevator, rudder, channel one, channel two, channel three, and so on and so forth. But they're not labeled right and left. So before you send them through and make it really hard to tell which one's which, it's always a good idea to go ahead and label these. Um, so this one's going to be the right wing, so we'll take this and label it R. And then we'll take the left one and we'll label it L. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to try to get these wires through, and it's going to be a huge pain, I can already tell. The electronic speed control, I'm probably just going to pull that all the way forward for now, just so that we can get these wires through and under and then we'll go ahead and push it back. But for now, we're gonna to try to get these things through and see how far off we are. We may have to do an extension cable just to reach. And this is gonna be, cable management's always tricky in these smaller planes. The other thing I was thinking about is this Lemon RX uh, satellite could go into this cavity which would be fine, but then we also have another cable going through. So I'm just not 100% sure I'm going to end up using the satellite in this application. You can use that on another application. It doesn't have to be this one. Um, can we string up here? We try putting a little piece of string through maybe. Okay, if you don't have something handy, even if you're not using this now, it can sometimes help to feed the wires through. So what you'll do is you'll more or less just plug these things in, you'll plug the left and the right in, just like you would if you were using the, the Y cable. And then you can use the Y cable to actually feed it through. When you get it through, you can disconnect one of them, and then uh, the other one would need an extension cord. If you still need the extension, you'll know at that point. And it's labeled aileron channel one. So I'm gonna try to do this first before I get any more creative. And it's always super awkward because there's just not that much room, period. I might fight with this and then come right back to you guys. And I'll show you how I did it. Alright guys, so for the first time you get to see the wing seated in there. Um, you just kind of rotate that in. And what I did was, I, like I said, I took the Y splitter and I used that to just guide it in there. And now I've got the Y splitter through and so you could detach them here. But at this point, it's, I mean, you barely got enough length, which means you're gonna have to basically feed the receiver down in there and plug in the channels. So I guess we could 
probably try it, but it's nice to not have an extension cord in this application because it's so dang tight. So what I'm going to do is, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take and push this electronic speed control that got yanked back when I was doing that. I'm going to push that back to get it out of the way. I don't know if you guys can see in this pocket at all, but it's just going to be really, it's going to be tight no matter what you do. But if you can get it back in there, there's a more breathing room. There's a little more breathing room. So we'll just move that back and just kind of walk that so you can control and manipulate this little bundle of wires. And you've got to keep in mind you're going to have a receiver in there in a few minutes. The other thing is this longer wire is for throttle, and so that can actually be pushed back in there as well. Um, but if you end up um, having any issues, it's not going to be very fun. So what I'm going to do now is I have to decide if I'm going to use extension cords. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my receiver. It's an N-pin um, Lemon RX receiver. And I'm going to go to the aileron channel. And then I'm going to go to the auxiliary one channel would be where you would land those. Because gear is going to be consumed with the on-off for the stabilizer. Auxiliary one is going to be the first available port. Now you could use auxiliary one for your flaps if you wanted. Uh, keeping in mind there's a certain amount of impedance limit on the auxiliary 2, which is your bind plug, because if you were to um, emulate what a bind plug is going to look like, you're not going to be able to do, like certain landing gear will actually create the right conditions. So you can't actually put the gear on that channel. I've had that happen once. So you have to use the auxiliary channel for that, and then you can reassign the other flap run um, channel to the other one. And while we have this out, we might as well show you this because you're not going to be able to see it very well once it's in the plane. Um, what we're looking at here is there's Flapron, VTEL, Delta. I'm going to turn Flapron on, okay? And then I don't know what other, what other things are going to have to get reversed or switched around, so we're just going to do that one only. And basically, once you flip one of them, then that will allow you to activate your uh, stabilization. And so without further ado, I'm going to try plugging in one of these. And it's not looking super promising here. I mean, of course, you could use the Y cable to um, hook this up to a simpler, simpler setup. Um, looks like this one is the left that I have in my hand. And just turning on my radio to remind myself which one's which. Doesn't matter which plane you've got. I'm just going to, one that's got a left and right. I'm going to go servo setup. Looks like the left aileron is the uh, second, it's, excuse me, the right aileron is the, the second channel, and then, one, two, three, so it'd be the other one that's going to be your left. So that'll be the high channel, which is auxiliary one on this thing. So I'm going to see if I can get it to plug in. Um, incidentally, signal is up, minus is down in terms of the pin. So the bottom side would be your, your minus, and then... Um, the top pin would be your signal. And it is a label, but it's not 100% clear usually. And that's not something that's unique to Lemon RX, by the way. I've had some really 